Hi, welcome to the channel. In this video series, we'll be doing an introduction to computational finance with Python. We'll be working with Pandas mainly and Matplotlib in order to visualize some distributions. The idea would be to work with the main concepts, start from zero, and we'll be building up in complexity as we progress in this video series. So let's get started with the computational finance video series. Here I'm just importing uh, some python libraries that i'll be using pandas known by y finance that is to download data and matplotlib um in this cell i'm just defining the the date range i'll be downloading data from so 2005 to 2023 now i'm just downloading the data so um we have this yf.download function which is passing the ticker and the date range and this downloads the price data. So we have one observation of the prices for each day. So we have open, high, low, close, and adjusted close and volume. So we will be using mostly the adjusted close column. That is what includes dividends. So um, this, this data set we're using, uh, SPY is an ETF of the S&P 500, and it does pay dividends. So we, we actually need to use it. Um, so here I'm just converting the date so it's so we don't have all this timestamp-ish uh, stuff. So it's just the date. Uh, looks a little bit cleaner. And this is how it looks. So the first idea would be to compute the returns. So um, what what this gives you is, uh, the information it gives you is the, yeah how much you would have made if you would invest it for one day in this case from one day so that's computed here and we have in pandas this function called percent change that makes it relatively easy so if we will have this we would have to compute the lag of a column using shift we have a very simple way to do this in pandas just percent change and mainly what this does is it, it grabs this column and it, it we take this observation and divide it by this one and subtract one. So here I have it as an example. So 83.85, I have it here, 84.89 here. So we divide it by one. So we get this value, right? If I do that for the other observation, this one and this one, we get this value. So one more thing we could do is, so let's say I want to invest from this day to this day. So that would be two days. So I would take this value and divide it by this one. So this is what I have here. So this would be minus 1.9%. So we actually lost some money there. And so this would be how to compute the returns for two days. So it happens that generally what we do is we compute it for one day or one period. And we can uh, reconstruct the multiple period returns by multiplying the series. So, so here I have the first re return here and the second one. So I do one plus the return. So it would be uh, one plus R1 times one plus R2. So this will give me the two day return. And, and this is what we're doing here. So this will be useful later on when we compute the monthly returns. This part uh, to me is, is really the core of uh, finance really in general, because it's what tells you how the investment, how well it worked. So this is really, really important to understand well. And yeah, it's the foundation of everything. So just to be uh, concrete and, and precise this is called in, in finance terms it's called uh, simple returns um, there's a different way to compute them but we, we can do that in another bit so then once we have these returns returns uh, column we can just plot a histogram of it and this is how the daily returns look like so it looks kind of that the distribution is relatively symmetric so it's centered in zero and it looks relatively similar to both sides. Maybe there are a few more values on the left, which means we lose uh, money um, more often, but generally the daily returns, 
they have this structure and yeah we'll, we'll get we'll to that later so uh, another way to look at the same distribution is to compute decimals so what this does is, is break the distribution in 10 groups and we we just get the the, the value for each um so so for example 0 0.5 would be the median and we can see it's relatively close to zero here is another way to compute returns uh, as i mentioned before you have to first uh, lag the column the adjusted close column so you create another column you lag it and then you do the adjusted close divided the lagged column minus one so it will be this column divided this column minus one and this gives you the the same value so um yeah okay so what i'm doing here is just keeping only the returns uh, i don't really need the price data because we, we already computed the returns we don't need it anymore for what we're going to be doing in this section i'm going to compute the monthly returns so um so here i come uh yeah, I pass to daytime to the index, so it's a daytime object, and then I can resample by month. Resampling is kind of like a group by on time series, and what we're doing here is uh, exactly the same operation that we did above. It's this one plus the return, one times one plus the return. So we do that for all the month, uh, and so we accumulate the returns that happen during the month, and this is how the monthly returns time series looks like so we have one observation for each month and this is something a little bit easier to understand because uh, you, you can say okay i invested during this whole month and i got 1.7 percent return so then the next month you got two percent positive so this is starting to be something yeah more human comprehensible uh and there's a lot more information in the monthly returns compared to the daily returns. So we'll see that the histogram looks a little bit different here. Um, and so we can see here that the histogram is not centered in zero. It's centered in a little bit positive value. Um, and we have a few of these values here that on the left side of the histogram that mean that we had some really bad months, so minus uh, less than minus fifteen percent. So that that's not good. Um, and and yeah, this is uh, a little bit the difference between the monthly returns and the daily returns. We can say that there's more signal in the monthly returns. So if we compute the mean of the returns. So we can see it's close to one percent, and. If we take the median here, it's 1.3%, which seems a little bit high. Um, so what we can do is grab this uh, monthly mean, uh, mean return, and we can annualize it. And this gives us 10.3%. So really res reasonable uh, expected return. So in finance, this is called expected return. Basically, the you compute the return series and you say, okay, the, I can, this is the normal value I, I would expect if I invest uh, for the, for 20 years into the future, I would make this amount. Um, okay. So that's enough for now. Um, so the idea would be to take a look at what kind of, uh, plots we can do with these time series, uh, what kind of descriptive plots of the distribution we can uh, do so uh, one of them is this uh, QQ plot so uh, basically what this does is it compares the theoretical distribution that I have it on the x-axis with the uh, empirical distribution so the red line would mean that uh, the values from the from the observed data they are the same as the normal distribution so we can see that the dots they are relatively close to a normal distribution but they 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 have some differences here that uh yeah you have a little bit more negative values than a normal distribution would have so this is what's called uh, generally uh, a long tail um, and it's a very typical uh 
issue in finance. That's why uh, normal distributions are generally not used um, to model returns because of this problem. So then we can compute the, the quantiles. Um, so this gives us um, between the 25th and 75th quantile, we have 50% of the data that's in the center of the distribution. So we can see here that 50% of the data happens to be between minus 1.5% and 3.4%. So that's what you can expect. And another way to look at this is a uh, box plot. So yeah, here we have the median in green, that's 1.3%. The 25th percentile is this line here, that's minus 1.5. And this value is 3.4, that we have it here. And I mean, the box plot, I think, is a really great plot to understand how a distribution looks. And, and we can see here that these values are outliers, but there are not as many outliers on the positive side. And, and this is mainly one of the things that I was uh, finding here. Um, so uh, yeah, this is, I think, a really good summary of the distribution. Uh, it's very common in finance. Uh, I'm pretty sure if you would plot uh, the price of Bitcoin or some other asset that has more volatility, there will be a lot more values on this side. Um, so then we can plot the three, uh, that make the three plots combined. So the histogram, uh, here it has a line with the average, um, then with the box plot and then the QQ plot. So what would be missing is to add some titles to this. Um, so first I want to explain a little bit the code. So here we define these three plots. So AX1, AX2, AX3. So here I'm doing monthly red X. So this is from pandas dot hist also uh, calling it from pandas. I, the only difference to make multiple plots is that I add the axis here. Um, and here I add the average line, the average uh, vertical line. So then for the box plot, I also use pandas plot, which I think looks pretty good. Um, and here I also call the this probability plot, or actually I think QQ plot is more, uh, it's QQ is quantile, quantile plot. That's, that's because you're comparing the, the theoretical quantiles and the observed quantiles. Um, and then here is the code to add some titles. So basically AX1 set title. So we just add some title to each plot. Here we add it to the second one. And yeah, that's, that's all I have for today. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe and like the video. Uh, let me know what you think of this new series.